Hello everyone and welcome to today's video which is another part of my Christmas in July add-on series. And today's video is all about add-ons with uh, ribbon closures, string closures and elastic closures. And the first add-on style is this accordion style booklet with a ribbon closure. And I've already used this style um, on my pages, on my interactive page styles for mini albums a lot. So um, this is really a great booklet with a lot of room for uh, 4 by 6 inch photos. And I really like the look of the ribbon to close it up and tie a bow in front. And to decorate this booklet I really didn't do much so I only added a floral pattern paper from the collection I'm using and then I also added some of these enamel dots to the center of some of those florals. And then the next style with a ribbon closure is this gatefold add-on style. So as you can see I just added two white eyelets and the ribbon and then you can untie the ribbon closure to open it up and there are also flaps opening to the top and the bottom and this gives you room for five uh, four by six inch photos and then uh, for the gatefold sides I will probably use them for journaling instead of adding photos but you could of course. And then the second closure option which is similar to ribbon closures but then also completely different in my opinion are string closures uh, because when I'm using string closures I would usually um, also include some eyelets or breads and I would use them to actually have a way of um, wrapping around my string. But you could of course also do um, strings instead of a ribbon for the um, previous two uh, add-on styles. But um, the styles I'm showing you now are those styles with um, breads and uh, eyelids included as well. And I also want to share some tips and tricks for including eyelets and breads um, with these closures. And the same applies for the elastic closure, which is the third closure type for today. So after sharing the styles with the string and the elastic closure, I will definitely also talk more about eyelets and breads. So the first style with a string closure is this booklet and as you can see I used a regular eyelet, so just a small eyelet and then also I used um, some of my die cuts with a scallop frame uh, circle to cut out this circle out of cardstock and this is what I'm using for wrapping around the string to close up the booklet. And as you can see, it's a three-fold booklet, so you can include uh, four different 4x6 inch photos. And then for decoration, I only added pattern papers and um, again, this pattern paper on the um, smaller flap here was, was just perfect to include because um, with the stars um, and it was the perfect size and I really like how it turned out. It's very simple, so I didn't do much for decoration, but I think it still looks great also with a scalloped frame um, circle for the closure. Now for the second style I actually also included two eyelets and I used a white eyelets this time and then the string uh, would just wrap around both of those eyelets and then you can open it up and this is kind of like a pocket. So what I would do here, um, you could of course add a photo just to the um, to the 4x6 inch photo mat, but I would actually uh, place a couple of photos in here and just lay them in here. Or as you can see, you could also add a different photo mat in there with some pattern papers, or you could add one of those um, simple photo booklets, which I shared with you in the um, first video for this series. Um, but again, you could just lay in your photos and then close it up with the, uh, with the string again. 
Now let's have a look at the third closure option for today's video and also the last two Adam styles for today. So now we are looking at elastic closures which are also very fun to include. I really love using them and as you can see the first style is this pocket with an elastic closure and I again used a right eyelet here and then also a very tiny eyelet where I um, placed my um, elastic in. So you could just slide some 4 by 6 inch photos into the pocket or again you could also um, add a different photo mat or a basic photo booklet in there as well. And I again didn't do a lot for decoration, I just um, punched the corners to decorate the corners a little and then I used some matching pattern papers. And then for the last add-on style I decided to include this journal and I especially really love this for the um, travel folio I was making so I shared this with you already in a previous video and I thought it really needed a travel journal as well um, and this is just great to place in the box of my favorite folio number four and so I had to include it in this series of course and also this is used an elastic for the closure but it's a different elastic so we have used um, the thin elastic or like string elastic before but this one is a wider elastic and it's just great for this add-on style. And this would definitely be an add-on style which I would use for journaling instead of for placing photos. So as you can see I have just added some blank pages here. You could of course also use different pages like uh, with, a, uh, with lines or with dots. And um, yeah, so and then for decoration I only added a 4 by 6 no, 3 by 4 inch uh, journaling card from the collection which I backed onto some cardstock um, cut out with um, one of my scalloped frame die cuts which I really love using so you see them uh, all the time. So as I said before I now also want to talk a little bit more about um, eyelets and threads and how you could use them along with a string closure or with an elastic closure. So as you can see on this add-on style I decided to add um, two white eyelets for my string closure. And I really love using these white eyelets because you can get them in different colors and then I think they look really great and like high quality to me because um, they are out of metal. And um, what I also like about them is they are super easy to apply. So you could just use your eyelet setting tool and what I do is I always apply them very loosely to my cardstock so that I can uh, push them like against, like the back of the eyelet against the cardstock and then I would add some tape to the back of it and this makes the eyelet stand up and then it's just perfect for the string to go around the like bottom of the eyelet but then uh, because it's a white eyelet it would not like um, get loose or something so yeah it's just perfect it stays in place um, and that's why I'm using these white eyelets for these types of closure very often. And then on this adult style I just used a regular eyelet instead and not a white eyelet but what I did to also have this um, larger circle on the top to um, keep your string in place uh, is I actually cut out um, a circle using a like, scallop frame circle die cut um, and this is just out of cardstock but um, when I do that I would always um, like double stack those cardstock pieces so I cut it out twice or you can even cut it out um, a third time um, and then I stick it on top of each other and then it's a little sturdier um, and I also added my eyelid loosely to the cardstock and which helps with um, standing it up is that I tied the string around the bottom of the eyelet so this is also helpful for easily wrapping around my string and if you don't have eyelets or you don't have an eyelet setting tool or you simply just don't want to use eyelets um, this 
closure would totally also work if you're using a bread instead of an eyelid. So you would just place the bread um, in the middle of the uh, cardstock circle and then you could just attach it um, like the eyelid but you would just need to um, place it into the hole and then um, fold the legs of the bread on the back side. But what I want to show you now is actually how you could use a bread as well as an eyelet and why it's uh, very great to use both of them together. So what you could do is again um, just place your bread into the cardstock circle but then also place it into a regular eyelet and um, then you would just place it uh, in the hole of your cardstock but here you want to be careful because now you of course don't want to use the regular hole because your eyelet would just fall through but instead you want to use a very tiny hole like most of the eyelet setting tools also have the smaller holes and then um, your eyelid would just be standing in place and also um, the cardstock circle would be um, in the perfect position as well so this would be I think very helpful for these kind of closures because now your um, eyelid and cardstock is standing up and you can easily wrap around your string. And this trick is also very useful when you want to use this closure on um, chipboard. So because what I said before, and now it doesn't matter if you're using a regular eyelet with the cardstock circle or a white eyelet, um, the problem you would have when you're setting the eyelet um, just like I usually do, so like setting it loosely in place and then um, put a piece of tape on the back to have it stand up. Um, it doesn't work when your material is too thick. So with the chipboard I could not attach it loosely because um, the eyelet is just not um, long enough to um, be still attached loosely. So what you could do now is again you place your bread into the eyelet also for a white eyelet and then you just um, fold over the legs of the bread in a smaller hole and then you have your eyelet um, perfectly standing up on chipboard as well. And I actually also like the look of the eyelet and the bread together, so especially with the white eyelet I used here and then the um, black bread in the middle. And you can again also get breads in different colors, so they're really fun to include um, and very easy to use. But now I also want to give you some different options which are not like very useful but uh, for decoration purposes I really like to include uh, these options with my eyelet and bread closures as well. And the first decorating tip is to um, use some enamel dots um, on these closures and especially those larger ones. So for example, if you don't have any like fun colored uh, breads, you could add um, this enamel dot on a flat bread um, to the middle of the cardstock circle and I think it directly looks way better than the silver regular bread um, I placed in before. And you could also add them to the center of a white eyelet, so then it would look more like a button to me. Um, so if you like that, you could also do that. Um, yeah, so it's really just for decoration, but um, I have to say I'm almost never using these larger eyelets um, because I always use the small ones. So this is a good way for me to using them up as well. And then the second decorating tip would be to use these um, adhesive breads, which are really great because you can get them with a lot of different uh, brands and their collections. Um, so I know that Echo Park and Simple Stories has them and I'm using them a lot. So um, I like getting those and then you can just add them on top of the uh, white eyelet or also on top of a smaller eyelet. And then these could also be used like more functional. So let's go back again to um, adding a regular eyelet very loosely to your cardstock. Um, but then you wouldn't have like the wider um, circle on top to um, wrap your uh, string 
um, underneath it. Um, but then with this bread you could actually use this instead of a cardstock circle. So again you would add your eyelet very loosely to your cardstock and then just place um, the bread on the, uh, not the bread, yeah the adhesive bread um, on the top and then um, this would be perfect to use your string closure with or also your elastic closure. I actually didn't uh, film my elastic closure um, pocket add-on style but um, you could of course also for the pocket add-on style with the elastic closure you could also add um, enamel dots or breads to them or um, do any of those tricks I just shared with you. And then there's only one other idea uh, which I want to share with you before we're continuing with the tutorials for today. And this would be to, um, instead of a bread or an enamel dot, um, to use a chipboard element from the collection as well. So as you can see, um, this like a snowflake chipboard element would be a great way of um, including onto this um, closure type. And I think it not only looks great, but then again, you could also use it in a functional way to um, actually, like instead of a white eyelid basically, or instead of a regular eyelid together with a cardstock circle. Okay, so now we can start with the six tutorials for these um, different add-on styles I shared with you. And as always, you want to start with cutting down your cardstock and pattern paper elements. And for the measurements, you can actually get um, the cutting guides and templates in my Etsy store. And really, they make it super easy to um, actually build those add-on styles. And when you cut your elements according to the cutting guide, um, I would also suggest to um, label them so you find the letters for each element on the cutting guides as well. And with labeling, it makes it super easy to follow along with this video tutorial. And for a lot of those cardstock elements, there is also scoring required. Um, so after cutting them down, you would also need to score your cardstock. And again, with the templates, it's really easy to see um, where to score your cardstock elements and um, which cardstock elements actually need scoring. And to start with the first add-on style, we need to place some 3 8 of an inch tape right next to the scoring line on cardstock element A. And I did a mistake here with labeling the cardstock. So as you can see, there is a B written on it, but we are working on cardstock element A right now. And then after placing tape on cardstock element A, we can turn around the cardstock and then use our scissors to um, cut the corners. So you just want to cut at an angle right next to the scoring line as well. And then after cutting, we can also fold up the little flap we have created with scoring. And we also do that on the back side of cardstock element A. And then for the second scoring line, we also need to fold our cardstock. But now you want to do that on the front side of cardstock element A. And then we can attach cardstock element A onto cardstock element B. And for attaching cardstock elements, I like to just remove half of the tape backing and then I can use the non-sticky side to align my cardstock with the second cardstock piece I'm attaching it to. And once I've found the right position, I can then remove the rest of the uh, tape backing and stick it in place. And you want to attach it so that you have this long gatefold um, cardstock element. And now before adding the ribbon to this um, add-on style, I want to use my ruler here to actually uh, find the middle of the cardstock and then I just mark it down and that's where I want to attach my ribbon now. And then to attach the ribbon, I just use some tape here and place it on the back side of this accordion uh, fold booklet. And then I just get my ribbon and I make sure that I place the middle of my ribbon piece um, onto the back side. So here you can see that I'm still like figuring out like which lengths to use so that I can tie a nice bow. 
And to give you an idea, I actually ended up using a ribbon piece in the length of 24 inches. But as you can see, I um, actually add my ribbon first and I tie a knot to make sure that it's the right length before I actually cut it down to size. And now for the next step, I'm going to attach my pen and paper B onto cardstock element B. And before I also decided to decorate the corners a little, so I'm using my corner punching tool here. But this is of course um, optional, it's just for decoration. So um, you could also uh, just go ahead and use some glue to attach your pattern paper right onto the cardstock. And for attaching pattern papers, I always like using wet glue instead of tape because when using wet glue, you're still able to move around your uh, pattern paper for a few seconds before sticking it in place. And that's already it for this add-on style, so we can continue now with the next add-on style, which is again a style with a ribbon closure. And to start with the next add-on style, we just need cardstock elements B and some 3 8 of an inch tape. And as you can see, I just place my tape right next to the scoring lines on cardstock element B. And then I turn around my cardstock and I use my scissors to cut off the corners at an angle. And you also want to do that right next to the scoring lines and don't actually cut into the scoring lines. And after cutting the corners, we can continue by folding up those cardstock elements B um, on the scoring lines and we want to do that on the back side as well. So just fold up those little flaps we have created with scoring and use your bone folder to burnish it down. And then we also need to place some 3 eighths of an inch tape um, next to the scoring lines on cardstock element C. And again, I make sure that I don't accidentally cover up the scoring lines when placing my tape. And then we also need to cut the corners. So again, we want to cut at an angle right next to the scoring lines. And then you can also um, fold up this little flap we have created with scoring. And for this, I like using my bone folder. And also you want to fold up those flaps on the back side of your cardstock element C. Now that our cardstock elements are prepared, we can continue by attaching cardstock element C onto cardstock element A. And for attaching my cardstock element, I like to um, remove the tape backing just from one side, so just half of it. And then I hold up the sticky side and use the non-sticky side to align my cardstock edge uh, of cardstock element C with the edge of cardstock element A. And then once I have found the right position, I remove the rest of the tape backing to stick it down. And of course, I would do exactly the same for the second cardstock element C. However, I now want to align it with the edge of the first cardstock element C so that it's perfectly um, attached next to each other. And then we can also attach cardstock elements B onto cardstock element A. So again, I remove just the half of the tape backing from one side. I hold up the sticky side to align my non-sticky side with the edge of cardstock element A. But now you want to be careful that you also don't cover up the scoring lines of the flaps of cardstock element C. So cardstock elements B are supposed to be in between those two cardstock elements C and cardstock elements C need to be folded over cardstock element B. So don't accidentally cover up the scoring lines because then you would no longer be able to fold cardstock element C as well. And then we need pattern paper C and on pattern paper C we actually want to attach our ribbon to. So what I do first is I may use my um, Tim Holtz ruler to find the middle on those uh, pattern papers. And I actually mark the middle at one inch from the edges of the um, pattern paper. And you want to do that from the edge which is like in the middle of cardstock element A. So that's where the gatefold would open. And I do that on both pattern papers. And then I can continue with um, punching a hole with my eyelet setting tool. Um, so you just want to use your eyelet setting tool and punch the hole where you just marked it. And then you can get your eyelets and just set them in place. So I again use my eyelet setting tool here. I'm actually using the big bite 
uh, by We Are Makers and then I placed my eyelids and I decided to use some white eyelids here just for decoration but you could just add um, regular eyelids instead as well and it would work just the same. Now we can add our ribbon. So I just got um, a piece of ribbon and then I just pulled it through um, one of the eyelets uh, from the outside and now we have to secure it in place. So I like using one piece of tape underneath the ribbon end and then I also like to use a second piece of tape on top of it. But um, as you can see here, first I actually um, figure out the length of the ribbon I need to cut. And then I cut it down for the first side. And then I also had to, of course, um, do that on the second pattern paper as well. And I actually use 10 inch of ribbon on each side. So that's what I'm cutting here. And then again, you just want to pull through your ribbon um, through the eyelet from the front to the back side of the pattern paper and then place a piece of tape underneath and then as I said before I also like to use um, a writer piece of tape to place on top of the ribbon as well as on top of the eyelet um, backing because this can be very sharp and so uh, this way I like to make sure that it's um, covered a little. Now those pattern papers C need to be attached onto um, cardstock element C and for attaching I like to also add some tape to the back side of those pattern papers because um, you have placed the eyelets here and um, I find it hard to really stick it down um, around the eyelet and it's easier with tape instead of glue. So I'm just placing tape on the sides of uh, pattern paper C but then as you can see I also use glue and uh, what I do now is I actually don't remove the um, tape backing just yet but instead I just attach the pattern paper with the wet glue I have placed and then I make sure that it's in the right position and then I just lift up the pattern paper carefully to remove the tape backing and then I use my bone folder to actually burnish it down and of course you want to do exactly the same for the second um, pattern paper C. And then you're actually done with this add-on style and as you can see I also added a little tag to the ribbon but this is of course optional um, and then I used my lighter here to um, just melt the ends of the ribbon a little bit so that the ribbon won't rip apart. Now for the first step for the next add-on style uh, we would need to place some 3 8 of an inch tape right next to this going line on cardstock element B and then I also use my scissors on the back side of cardstock element B to cut the corners right next to this going line and then we can fold up this little flap we have created for scoring and you also want to do that on the back side of cardstock element B and burnish it down. And then we also need to place tape right next to this going line on cardstock element C, but you don't want to do that on the front side of cardstock element C. So now you actually want to turn around your cardstock element. And again, that's the reason why I recommend to um, always label your cardstock so you know which, one, which side is the front and which side is the back. So turn around cardstock element C and then place your 3 8 of an inch tape. And then you can continue by also cutting the corners at an angle right next to the scoring line. And then this little flap needs to be folded on the back side of cardstock element C as well. So just fold it up and use your bone folder to burnish it down. Then you can attach cardstock element B onto cardstock element A and as you can see I also uh, folded cardstock element A um, along the scoring line on the back side and now for cardstock element B it needs to be attached to um, the inside of cardstock element A. So again for attaching my cardstock elements I like to first just remove half of the tape backing from one side and then I hold up the sticky side and use the non-sticky side to align my cardstock edges with the cardstock I'm attaching it to. And then cardstock element C also needs to be attached onto cardstock element A on the opposite side as cardstock element B 
And for attaching cardstock element C, I actually first bring it in the right position by folding it over the booklet. So your booklet is closed and you want to fold it um, over it so that the flap is on the back side. And then once you have it in the correct position, uh, carefully turn it around and then hold it in place so that you can then remove the tape backing and actually stick it down. Now before I add the pattern papers, I also decided that I wanted pattern paper and cardstock elements um, C with uh, some round corners. So I'm using my corner punching tool here to round the corners on cardstock element C. And then I do that of course also on, cardstock, uh, on pattern paper C before actually attaching pattern paper C onto cardstock element C. And for attaching it, I use some wet glue so that I'm still able to move around the pattern paper and find the right position so that I have an even border around my pattern paper. Now that my pattern paper C is attached, I can use my ruler to actually find the middle um, of cardstock element C. And that's where I want to place my eyelid for the closure. And then after marking it, you would need um, an eyelet setting tool. So I'm using my Big Bite by We Are Makers here. And then I punch a hole first. And then I also um, got this uh, cardstock piece. And as I said in the beginning, where I was talking about um, eyelets and breads and everything, um, that's an option. You could also use a white eyelet here instead. But I'm just using this um, scalloped circle frame die cut piece. Um, so it's cardstock and actually I uh, sticked two of the same pieces on top of each other so that it's a little thicker. And then I just place my eyelid in the hole in the middle of this um, circle. And then I also place the eyelid into the hole on cardstock element C. And then you can set the eyelet in place and as I said I really like to set it in loosely so that it would stand up um, and to actually help it standing up I use a piece of tape and place it um, against the back of the eyelet. So I just place it on the um, inside of cardstock element C and I press against it so that the eyelet actually sticks onto the tape and stands up um, on the cardstock. Now you would need a piece of string which you um, can add to the eyelet by actually tying it around the eyelet. And after tying the knot I also use my scissors to cut the string a little shorter. And then um, you want to make sure that you have it in a good length. And what I like to do is I just wrap it around like um, three or four times and then at the end I also just wrap it around the eyelet like three times or two times and then I cut it at like a little piece so this would be where you would open it up. Now to cover up the back side of cardstock element C and especially the eyelet with the tape uh, we are using a second pattern paper C and here I also add some tape to the back side of pen and paper C um, just to the to the sides um, and then I also use some red glue in the middle and I actually don't remove the tape backing just yet but instead I place my pen and paper in the right position first and then I carefully lift up the pen and paper to remove the tape backing and stick it in completely by also using my bone folder to burnish it down. And then for the last step for this add-on style, we only need to attach uh, pattern paper A onto cardstock element A. And to start with the next add-on style, we just need cardstock elements B and some 3 8 of an inch tape. And as you can see, I just place my tape right next to the scoring lines on cardstock element B. And then I turn around my cardstock and I use my scissors to cut off the corners at an angle. And you also want to do that right next to the scoring lines and don't actually cut into the scoring lines. And after cutting the corners, we can continue by folding up those cardstock elements B um, on the scoring lines and we want to do that on the back side as well. So just fold up those little flaps we have created with scoring and use your bone folder to burnish it down. 
And then we also need to place some 3 eighths of an inch tape um, next to the scoring lines on cardstock element C. And again, I make sure that I don't accidentally cover up the scoring lines when placing my tape. Now, after attaching the tape, we can also cut the corners at an angle right next to the scoring line. So for this, I like to turn around my cardstock elements and use my scissors. And then um, you can continue by folding up those um, little flaps on cardstock element C. And same as for cardstock elements B, you want to do that on the back side of cardstock element C. And then we can continue with attaching cardstock elements B onto cardstock element A. And for attaching cardstock elements, I always like to remove just half of the tape backing from one side. And then I hold up the sticky side and I use the non-sticky side to align my cardstock with the edge of um, cardstock element A, which is underneath. And then once I have found the right position, I just uh, remove the rest of the tape backing to stick it down. Then we also need to attach um, cardstock element C to cardstock element A. And again, just remove the tape backing from one side and then you can use the non-sticky side to align your cardstock with the edge of cardstock element A. Um, but then with the cardstock element C, you actually want to place them in between of those cardstock element B and you don't want them to get in the way. So um, make sure that you don't accidentally cover up the scoring lines of those um, little flaps of cardstock elements B so that you're still able to fold your cardstock elements B over cardstock element C. And then I also decided to round the corners on cardstock elements B and actually I also wanted to do that on uh, cardstock elements C but for some reason I thought I couldn't do it because um, cardstock element B would be in the way but yeah I could have just like fold over cardstock element B and then I would be able to also punch the corners on cardstock element C just as I did for cardstock elements B. Um, so yeah next time I will definitely do that because um, when doing uh, when rounding the corners you would be able to fold it very nicely and um, it still works when the corners are not round but yeah I definitely prefer this um, add-on style with some round corners. And then of course when you round the corners on the cardstock you would have to also do that on the pattern papers. So I'm getting my pattern papers B here and I round the corners before I actually place some wet glue on the back side of the pattern papers and then I stick it down onto um, cardstock elements B. And then we of course also need to attach um, pattern paper C onto cardstock element C. So I again just use some red glue to attach my pattern paper onto the cardstock. And then I got my bone folder again to actually burnish down those um, little flaps. And now we can also attach our pattern paper A onto cardstock element A. Um, so just get your pattern paper and then again use some red glue so that you can find um, the right position for your pattern paper and still move it around a little and then you can just stick it in place and now it would be time to actually attach our eyelids for the string closure. And before I attach the eyelids, I make sure that I place them in the right position. So I use my ruler here and I just mark it um, at the middle of each of those um, cardstock elements. And after we have marked it, we can now get our um, eyelid setting tool. So I'm using my big bite here and then you can just punch the holes on both cardstock elements B. And then for this add-on style, I decided to use some white eyelids for the closure, but um, yeah, as I said, you could also use uh, breads or um, regular eyelids. So if you maybe have skipped the beginning of this video, um, there is a part in this video in which I also talk about um, using white eyelids and breads on these um, add-on styles. But when using those eyelets on this add-on style, you want to be careful that you set them in place just loosely. So you don't want to set the eyelet in completely. So this means you don't want to press your eyelet setting tool all the way down, but instead just press it like slightly so that the eyelet is still loose. 
And what we need to do then is we get our string and I just pull it through one of those um, white eyelets and I actually pull it from the um, top side of cardstock element B to the back side and then I use a piece of tape underneath and um, I just uh, stick my string on top of it and then I also use a second piece of tape and here I'm actually using a wider piece of tape because I want to cover up the string but then also cover up the back of the eyelet. And by adding this piece of tape you also make sure that your eyelet is no longer loose but actually standing up perfectly so that you would be able to easily uh, wrap around your string for this closure. And then we are almost done with this add-on style, but we can now also add some uh, pen and papers to the back sides of cardstock element C and cardstock elements B. Um, and this would be also helpful to cover up the tape and the eyelet backing. So um, again, make sure that if you have um, punch the corners, round the corners on those um, cardstock elements that you also round the corners on the pattern paper. And then for um, cardstock elements B, I'm actually placing some tape on the back of the pattern papers B because um, with the eyelet it's a little like trickier to um, only use uh, wet glue and I find it um, better to use tape here instead. And then I just remove the tape backing completely and carefully place it in the right position on the back side of um, cardstock elements B. Um, yeah, I'm totally fine with that, even though sometimes it might be not so straight and it's easier with wet glue to align your pattern paper. Um, but then it's also only the inside of this add-on style. So yeah, it's fine and it works for me. But then for cardstock element C, I actually use wet glue instead of tape because um, cardstock element C don't have any eyelets attached to them and they are not like in use for the closure. So um, it's totally fine to just use wet glue instead of tape. Now we can continue with the next add-on style and this is the first style for our elastic closures. So um, you want to start with actually placing some tape right next to the scoring lines on cardstock element B. And then we can also cut the corners and for this I just like to turn around my cardstock element and use my scissors to cut the corners at an angle right next to the scoring line. And after cutting the corners we can also fold up those little flaps we have created for scoring and you want to do that on the back side of cardstock element B. So um, always make sure to label your cardstock so that you know which one is the front and which one is the back side. And then we will also need to add some tape onto cardstock element C. So again, place your 3 8 of an inch tape right next to the scoring line before um, actually cutting the corners and then also um, fold up the flap on cardstock element C on the back side. Now, after preparing those cardstock elements, we can attach cardstock element B onto cardstock element A. And I like to remove uh, just half of the tape backing from the bottom of the pocket, so from the bottom of cardstock element B. And then I hold up the sticky side and use the non-sticky side to align the bottom of cardstock element B with the edge of cardstock element A. And once I've found the right position, I remove the rest of the tape backing from the bottom pocket and then um, I stick it in completely. But we still don't want to attach the sides of the pocket yet. So uh, first we want to attach cardstock element C to the top of cardstock element A. So I again just remove half of the tape backing from one side and I hold up the sticky side to use the non-sticky side and align my cardstock element C with the edge of cardstock element A. And then we can attach um, pen and paper B as well as pen and paper C. And to decorate the corners, I also um, use my corner punching tool and just punch the corners on pad and paper B on the bottom and then on pad and paper C on the top. And then for cardstock element C, I actually also rounded the corners um, on the 
bottom and so you also have to do that on the cardstock element so that's what I do here and then we can continue by actually adding those pattern papers onto the cardstock and for attaching pattern paper I always like using wet glue instead of tape because then I'm still able to um, move around my pattern paper and find the right position. Now before I place the eyelets for our um, elastic closure I'm actually going to mark again where I want this to be placed at. So first I'm marking it on cardstock element C and I just want this to be in the middle of course um, and then for cardstock element B as well and you could actually like choose where you want this to be. So I had it a little too high in my opinion. I would probably do it um, the next time uh, for cardstock element B I would probably set my eyelid a little lower. So after marking the positions I can then use my eyelid setting tool and punch the holes and when I'm doing an elastic closure I always like using one very tiny eyelet so that's where I attach my elastic to and this would be onto cardstock element C and this means that I'm punching the smallest hole on my eyelid setting tool and then I'm also using a tiny eyelet, but then for um, cardstock element B, I'm just punching the regular hole, so the larger hole. And then I first attached my right eyelet, which I want to use for this closure style, um, and I attach it to cardstock element B, and uh, same as for the previous styles, you want to attach it very loosely. So that means that you're not pressing your eyelet setting tool all the way down, but instead just uh, press it slightly so that your eyelet is still um, attached very loosely and you can actually um, stand it up so that your string would uh, be perfectly wrapped around. But then for the tiny eyelet you can just go ahead and set it in completely um, but always make sure that when you're using two different sized eyelets or two different sized um, holes that you have the right settings on your um, eyelet setting tool first. So now after setting those eyelets we would need some elastic string. And I always like to uh, first fold my string in the middle and then I use the middle to pull it through um, the small eyelet, so on cardstock element C. And you want to do that from the back side to the outside. It can be a little tricky but it works just fine to pull it through like this. It's easier for me than pulling the ends one by one. Um, and then you can just make sure that you find the right length. Um, so what I do here is I just hold it in place and I close it up to see if it would wrap around the eyelet um, with some like force to it as well. And if not, I'm just pulling the end again to um, shorten my string uh, elastic. And once you have figured out the right length for your elastic, you can then um, attach it to the um, back side of cardstock element C. And for this, I like to get um, two pieces of tape, which I place right next to the eyelet on both sides. And then I just grab the ends of the string elastic and I just stick it down onto um, the tape. And after sticking it down to the tape, you could still make sure that it's really in the right le uh, length. So that's what I'm doing here. I close up this add-on style again to make sure that the elastic is long enough or short enough to wrap nicely around the eyelet. And you might want to actually shorten your ends of the elastic more than I did it here. But um, yeah, so I left it like this and then I got another piece of tape, uh, which, what, uh, which was a wider piece of tape to actually cover up the eyelet and the elastic. But I left it quite long, so I would not suggest to do that because you could actually later tell even when I covered it up with the pattern paper. 
And now we also want to cover up the back side of the white eyelid, so the eyelid which we have placed on cardstock element B. So I'm using again a piece of wider tape and then I just cover it up and I actually make sure that I um, burnish it down so I press it against the eyelid and this way the eyelid would actually be able to um, stand up so it's no longer loose but staying in a good position so that you can perfectly wrap around your um, elastic closure. And now we can also remove the tape backing from the sides of the pocket, from the sides of cardstock element B and then you can just carefully uh, fold it up and press it onto cardstock element A to stick it in place and as you can see I also use my bone folder here to burnish it down. Now for the next step we need um, pattern paper C which is going to cover up the um, back side of cardstock element C so we can actually hide um, the tape backing, uh, I mean the tape and the elastic with this pattern paper and that's the reason why I'm not only using wet glue here but also some tape so I actually place the tape on the top and the bottom um, of my pattern paper and then I use some wet glue um, in the middle and I actually don't remove the tape backing yet but um, attach the pattern paper with the wet glue first and then I lift up the pattern paper to also remove the tape backing and stick it down. And I find it really helpful to have tape here because um, it makes it so much easier for um, to, to actually um, stick it down next to the eyelet and the elastic but then um, as I said I should have like trimmed my elastic more um, so that you wouldn't be able to see it underneath the pattern paper. Now we finished up this um, add-on style but here again I show you that you could add um, an enamel dot or an adhesive thread um, to the white eyelid for decoration as well. Now we can start with the tutorial for the last add-on style for today which is a second um, add-on style with an elastic closure. So first we would need um, pen and paper A and then also all our um, regular paper sheets. So I'm just using some regular print uh, paper so um, it doesn't have to be heavy weight or anything. You want this to be um, for the inside of the journal we are making. And for the first step we would need to fold all those paper sheets in the middle. So that's what I'm doing here. I don't use a scoreboard or um, a bone folder or anything. Um, I just fold it in the middle by aligning the ends um, on top of each other. And then I just use a paper clip to hold it in place before continuing with the um, pattern paper A which also needs to be folded in the middle. Now this pen and paper is going to be the cover and what you can do now is you just slide your stack of paper sheets um, into this cover so that it's um, like in the middle um, right at the scoring line of the pen and paper um, and make sure that you have an even border on the top, the bottom and the side of this um, booklet so I just hold it in place I might have to um, slide it a little um, so that it's in the perfect position and then I again use my um, paper clip here to actually hold it together. And now you would need a stapler and if you have some of those um, craft staplers uh, by Craftily Basics or by um, We Are Makers then these are perfect to use now but I actually have them at home but I don't have them with me here in Australia. But what you could also do, you could just use a regular stapler if this stapler is able to be open completely and most of them actually are. So as you can see um, you can just open it up and have it lay flat so you don't no longer have the um, bottom of the stapler um, underneath but you can still staple with it and I'm showing you how to do that exactly. 
And it's actually quite simple with a regular stapler. You would also only need um, something for protection underneath. So something your staple would go into and I'm just using an eraser here. And I place the eraser um, in the first position which would be um, in the middle of the uh, booklet and the paper sheets. So that's where you actually folded your booklet and the paper. Um, and I start with um, the bottom first. So I place it in the middle but then on the bottom and then um, you can just use your stapler and lay it on top so that it's aligned with the um, like scoring line in the middle of where you folded your booklet and then you can just press it down and the staple will just go through and then go into the um, eraser so yeah nothing happens to your table or something if you use if you use something um, underneath. And then we can just um, turn around our journal and um, remove the eraser by carefully lifting it up. But what you would need to do now, uh, which you would actually not need to do when you're using one of those other staplers is uh, you would have to um, bend or um, fold those ends of the staple. And you could just use your fingers for it or um, you could use a tool. So I'm using this metal ruler now. Um, you could also use your bone folder or as I said, um, I'm also like, <laughs> you can see it right now. I actually ended up using my fingers just to um, fold it towards the middle. So um, yeah, and then it's set in place basically. And then you can continue with the next stapler, which is going to be attached um, on the top of the uh, album cover but then of course also in the middle. And again just make sure that you have your eraser um, underneath the next spot you want to use your stapler at. And now we can add our elastic closure to this journal. And I'm first going to mark where I would place my eyelids for the elastic closure. So I'm using my Tim Holtz ruler here and then I mark um, like at uh, one inch from the edge and then at um, two inch from the middle to each side. And then we can punch the holes for the eyelids. So I'm using my eyelid setting tool here. I punch the holes and then I get my regular sized eyelids to um, set into these toe, uh, two holes. And after adding those eyelets, we can then also add um, the elastic for our elastic closure. So I'm using this um, flat and wider elastic here and I just pull it through the first eyelet on the bottom um, and you want to pull it through from the um, front of the back cover to the inside of the back cover. And then to attach the end of the elastic I just use a piece of tape and place it right next to the eyelet and then I stick my um, elastic on top of it. And then to cut it down to the right length I actually uh, wrap it around my journal from the outside and um, then I make sure that it's a little longer than the eyelet and then I grab my scissors and just cut it down and then you would be able to pull it through from the outside eyelet um, and then again you can make sure to attach it with a piece of tape on the inside of the back cover. Now after attaching both ends of the elastic to the inside cover I then also want to um, add a piece of tape and I'm using some wider tape here um, on top of the elastic and the eyelet so this way you can make sure that it really stays in place and then um, you can go ahead and attach your pad and paper B to the inside of the cover as well. And I also decided that I want to round the corners on the journal cover, so that's what I do here. And then I, of course, also had to do it on my pattern paper B. And then for attaching pen and paper B um, for the back side, I actually not only use wet glue, but I also place some uh, 3 8 of an inch tape uh, just to the sides of pattern paper B. And then to the middle of the pattern paper I just add some wet glue and then first I'm going to attach it by only using the wet glue. So once I have it in the right position I then carefully lift up my pattern papers um, to remove the tape backing and stick it down completely. 
And then for the second pattern paper B, which is going to be placed um, on the inside of the front cover, you would only need to attach some red glue as there is no eyelet or uh, elastic attached to it. So regular red glue would work here and then you can just attach your pattern paper B onto um, the inside of the front cover. And then for decoration I also added a 3x4 inch journaling card and again I used my scallop frame die cut here um, and I cut out this cardstock in uh, pink and then to attach it I again just used some red glue and yeah then I'm basically done with the last add-on style for today. So I hope that you enjoyed this part today which was another part from my Christmas in July series and there's only one part left which will be going to be uploaded next week on Sunday. And if you enjoyed watching this video and liked these add-on style ideas I would really love to get your feedback in the comments down below and of course it would also mean a lot to me if you could give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And then I hope that you're having a great day and I would love to see you back in my next video. Bye!